condemns all forms of terrorism. Islam condemns the killing of any, any innocent human being, irrespective of caste, color, creed, irrespective of which nationality belongs to, irrespective of which religion he belongs to. Islam and I too condemn all forms of terrorism. I also condemn the 9-11 which took place on 11th of September 2001, the Twin Tower bombing in New York where few thousand innocent people were killed. I condemn the 7-7, 7th of July 2005, London bombing where more than 50 innocent people were killed. I also condemn the serial train bomb blast that took place in Bombay on the 11th of July 2006 where more than 180 innocent people were killed. I also condemn the Gujarat massacre, the riots which were plea planned, which took place in Gujarat in India, where innocent few thousand Muslims were killed. I condemn all sorts of terrorism, where innocent human beings are killed, irrespective whether they're Muslim or non-Muslim. <clears throat> and whatever acts of terrorism which takes the life of innocent human being is to be condemned including suicide bombing. Now we have recently in the few decades, past few decades, that a person goes, he puts up a bomb, goes in a marketplace, goes in a tube station in, on the road and he blows himself up and with him takes several other human lives. This act in no way, <clears throat> this act is not tolerable in any religion, especially Islam. Suicide bombing where innocent human beings are killed is totally prohibited in Islam. Unfortunately, though Islam is a religion which condemns all sorts of terrorism, all acts of terrorism that took place in the past, which is even taking place in this 21st century, even though it condemns, unfortunately, today, the media portrays Islam as a religion which promotes terrorism. Every community has its black sheep. Every community has its black sheep. And I'm also aware that there are black sheep in the Muslim community. What does the media do? The media picks up the black sheep of the Muslim community and they portray as though they're exemplary Muslims. Because of this today, we find that most of the people think that Islam promotes terrorism. If you read the Quran, if you read the sayings of the Prophet, Islam amongst all the religion is at the foremost in condemning the killing of innocent human beings. And one such prey of the media, of these media tactics, was myself. Eight months back, in the fourth week of June 2010, I was supposed to give a series of talk in UK. I was supposed to give a talk in the Wembley Arena, in Wembley, London, in LG Arena, NEC Birmingham, as well as Sheffield Arena in Sheffield. All these venues had a capacity of 10 to 15,000 people, and these are prestigious venues. Just three weeks before my lecture tour, there was an article which came in one of the leading newspapers that Sunday Times. Sunday Times, it gave an article, Muslim preacher of hate let into Britain. And this article, it gave portions of my speeches, which were either quoted out of context or they were misquoted. And it portrayed me as a preacher of hate, a person who promotes terrorism. And the next couple of days, the same article was picked up, rehashed, and reprinted in many of the newspapers of UK, not only newspapers of UK, but newspapers internationally, including the newspaper of India. Unfortunately, these articles inspired the Home Secretary of UK, Theresa May, to, to pass an exclusion order on the 16th of June, 2010. After reading these articles and hearing some clips from the YouTube, which were again is out of context, 
and there were portions which were manipulated. Based on these YouTube clips and the media report, the Home Secretary of UK on 16th of June 2010, she passed an exclusion order against me. And the next day, 17th of June, the Deputy High Commissioner of Britain in Bombay, on the 17th of June, they revoked and cancelled my visa. I had a valid five years multiple entry visa to UK, which was issued on the 15th of July 2008, valid till 15th of July 2013. I have been coming to UK since the past 20 years. I have come several times and for lecture tours several times. I had a valid multiple entry five years visa which had come twice before in 2008-2009 which was cancelled without giving me a fair hearing without giving me a fair hearing. I think this is an attack on freedom of expression as well as on human rights. Charles Farr, who is the Director General of the Office of Security and Counterterrorism, he was not in favor of this exclusion order. And he wanted me to reach to those Muslims who he felt the government could not reach. But the Home Secretary, ignoring the advice of her senior most security advisor, she went ahead with the exclusion order. And later on, a few weeks later, she even suspended one of the advisors under Charles Farr, who supported me. I personally have more faith in the judicial system rather than the political system of my country, India, as well as the country of UK. We did a judicial review and took it to the High Court. And Justice Cranston, though the Home Secretary said I have no right to file under human rights because I'm a non-UK citizen, Justice Cranston said, and he reviewed it, and he said that he can file a case. And he passed a judgment and said that the first three decisions of the Home Secretary on 16th of June, 17th of June, and the 27th of June, all three were unlawful. But however, later on in the month of August 2010, when they gave additional information, he said that this is lawful, which is not logical. I have faith in the judicial system. We have filed for an appeal against the last judgment of the High Court, and I have full faith that inshallah, very shortly, this exclusion order would be reversed by the Court of Appeal. I hope in future I may have the chance to meet the Home Secretary Theresa May personally and explain to her the peaceful message of Islam and remove any misconception about Islam or any of my lecture that she may have. I personally would have come, I would have personally preferred to come personally in the Oxford Union and give this talk and have a lively question and session rather than the satellite. Last month, I had gone to France, I was in Paris. We had a board meeting of our trust, Islamic Research Foundation International, which is based in UK, as well as Universal Broadcast Limited. Because I could not come to UK, I called the board members to Paris, and I was shocked. Normally, the world feels that France is more strict against Islam than UK. But when I applied for visa, I got it within one hour. And we had the board meeting there. I prefer having it in UK, but because of the exclusion order, which I feel the Court of Appeal very shortly will reverse it. And though the world may think that because of the exclusion order, it is an attack on freedom of expression. But I'd look, I would like to thank the Oxford Union that even though an exclusion order has been passed on me, yet they permitted this debate or this lecture for the question answer session. I would like to thank the Oxford Union, especially the president, uh, Mr. James Langman, for being bold and agreeing to have this lecture. The Oxford Union may or may not agree with my speech. They may like my talk or may not like my talk. What I appreciate is that they are really people who promote freedom of expression. I would like to conclude my speech by giving a message. Peace 
is the only solution for the problems of humanity. Many nations, many countries have armies. They have got military, they have got navy, they have got air force. Some countries have weapons of mass destruction. Some have nuclear weapons. Believe me, all these are not the solution for the problems of humanity. The only solution according to me for the problems of humanity is peace. There may be differences. There are differences in culture. There are differences in languages. There are differences in color. There are differences of society. Irrespective of the differences, one common factor amongst all human beings of the world is that all want peace. According to me, peace is the only solution for the problems of humanity. <clears throat> I said at the starting of my talk, Islam is derived from the Arabic word Salam, which means peace. And this word Salam is mentioned in the Quran no less than 43 times. It's mentioned no less than 43 times. And along with its derivatives, it's mentioned no less than 143 times. Salam, peace, is mentioned in the Quran no less than 143 times. And I started my talk by greeting all of you, Assalamu Alaikum, which means peace be on all of you. The Quran says in Surah Yasin, chapter number 36, verse number 58, that peace is a salutation from the Lord who is the most merciful. One of the attributes of Almighty God is As-Salam, the source of peace. Quran says in Surah Al-Hashar, chapter 59, verse number 23, it refers to Allah, Almighty God, as As-Salam, the source of peace. Quran says in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 16, that Almighty God guides those people who come towards Him, towards peace and safety, and takes them out of darkness into light. That's the reason. Every chapter of the glorious Quran, there are 114 chapters in the Quran, every chapter except 9, starts with the beautiful formula, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, in the name of Allah, Almighty God, the most merciful, the most gracious. According to me, peace is the only solution for humanity. And I am a person who spreads peace. My mission is to spread peace. And as many may be aware, that I started a global peace TV network about five years before, five years before in January 2006. In January 2006, I launched the Peace TV in English. Two and a half years later in 2008, Peace TV Urdu. And inshallah, in the next couple of months, in April 2011, we will launch the Peace TV Bangla. Today, Peace TV English is the largest watched Islamic satellite channel in the world. It has a viewership of more than 100 million, out of which more than 25% are non-Muslim. Even if I'm able to convince one human being, irrespective whether he's a Muslim or non-Muslim, and prevent him from killing one innocent human being, I feel I would have saved the whole of humankind. Peace is the only solution. My message is only of peace. My mission is to spread peace. I would like to end my talk with the quotation of Dr. Adam Pearson. Dr. Adam Pearson said, People worry that one day nuclear weaponry will fall in the hands of the Arabs, they fail to realize that the Islamic bomb, the bomb of peace, has already been dropped. It fell the day Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born.